Hey everybody, welcome to the special edition of Winners and Winners Radio. Scott and I are doing it NFL style. My name is Scott Steen and I am the uh, lead handicapper at winnersandwinners.com. And I'm your co-host Scott Rochelle, senior handicapper over at winnersandwinners.com. And together we make up Winners and Winners Radio. Give us an hour, we'll give you the winners and that is exactly what we're going to do today, Scott. That's about how long that's how long we try to shoot for as far as the show goes. And uh, we'll see what we can do, see if we can get these picks in under an hour. But it is it is no must, no fuss, no frills, no fancy sound effects, just you and me pedal to the metal doing picks. What do you think? Well, we need one sound effect once we actually give out the pick at the end of the show. Oh, that's right. That's right. We, uh, we do need that. And I got I to figure out where to find that. I, uh, I it's all good. That. We can figure that out as we go. But, yeah, looking forward to it. NFL so far this season been pretty good to me. Uh, I have a teaser pending, so we'll see how that goes. But as a whole, college football's underway as we're making this video. So far, pretty decent afternoon. Hopefully that carries over for Saturday night as well as NFL Sunday. Good. So far I've had a couple of late-game burns where I've uh, been – it's not quite call the cops. Like it's, it's not quite dial nine one one. It's more like call the cops on the non emergency line. It's dial four one one. You know, for like yeah. in, for, for information. For information, I, I was like, I didn't know you were old enough to remember four one one. Of course. All right, very good. Well, Scott, let's get her rocking and rolling, and let's get it started with a real barn burner. Two of our favorites are going to meet down there in Atlanta as the Washington Football Team travels to the Mercedes Dome East to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Is, that, is it still the Mercedes-Benz Dome, Scott? Is that what, what it is? Uh, it's Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Okay, well, sure. Yeah, because they – oh, that's right. Dome probably doesn't test well. Anywho, the uh, Falcons are favored on the road, point and a half. 47 and a half is your number. Scott, pretty much a game only a gambler could love, so tell me why you love it. Uh, because Washington's the better team. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what angle I have to like Atlanta. I know we've given Big Ben a lot of crap for being washed because he obviously is. Can we take a second to acknowledge how bad Matt Ryan is at this stage in his career? If I had a hat, I'd remove it for Matt Ryan's career. Yeah, Matty Ice is uh, no bueno right now. And nobody it's... talks about it because Big Ben, of course, is getting all of the publicity for being washed. It used to be Cam Newton last year. But if you just right. watch Matt Ryan and even the terrible offensive line he has, he's really just a shell, even if that at this point. I'll take Washington. They got embarrassed by Buffalo. That's okay. Buffalo is a good team. I know Washington's defense is awful. So is the Giants. And Atlanta only scored 17 points. So I think that Washington offensively should move the ball. I think defensively, they'll get to Ryan enough to stall out some drives. Give me Washington. You're going, to take, you're going to take the home team there, huh, bud? I'm taking the road team. Are you, are you taking the Falcons? Falcons oh, no, are I'm at home. I got to turn around on my sheet. Sorry, bud. Yeah, Falcons, no, are, at, yeah, Falcons are at home. Yeah, I'm taking Washington yeah, yeah. minus the one and a half. I said it, right? I just uh, – yeah. so. Had I said Mercedes-Benz right. Dome, you would have known that uh, Washington was the road team, right? Oh, absolutely. No, no yeah. question about it. No question about it. All right. So, so what about you? Because I know earlier in the week you were leaning towards the Falcons potentially, but – I am kind of curious what exactly you might like about the Falcons. It's more about what I don't like about Washington. I just – and this this defense has been so disappointing this year. But so is Atlanta's. I think that's kind of a wash. Well, Atlanta was supposed to have a bad defense. But I'm saying whether you were supposed to or not, you can still make the argument that they're both equally bad. I think Washington's offense is better than Atlanta's. You think Washington's offense is better than Atlanta's right now? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Well, I, 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 do you think Heineke right now is a better quarterback than Matt Ryan? I do. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tough call. It really is. I mean, right now. Of course, name Heineke, recognition. Got, you think, you think the, I'm nuts. The better stats. Yeah, Heineke's name recognition. Stats. Name recognition would assume that you think I'm nuts because I'm saying Matt Ryan's worse than a journeyman guy who is barely a starting quarterback. That's exactly what I'm saying. Matt Ryan is just not a very good quarterback at this stage in his career. Sorry. Right, right. I would, I would, have, to, I would have to agree with that. You know, I'll go with – let's call Washington. Stick with your guns. Take Atlanta. Stick with your guns. 
You know, they're the home team, bud. You know, just yeah, they were the home team against Philly in week one and lost by 90. You know, the fact that I'm on the fence about this is just pretty much a testament to how little I care about this game and how hard it is to arrive at a decision. But just to, just for the spice of the show, I'll take the Falcons. I'll take the home. They a huge home field advantage there. What a There's sucker. Literally going to be hundreds of people in the stands. So. Sucker bet. No, but actually, for the total, I find that difficult because I thought the side was easy. The total, I find hard because both defenses are terrible, and we know this. Right. But Atlanta's offense is so awful that I can't get behind and over. I want to because if they're going to get it together, I feel like Washington's defense would be a decent choice because they've been awful this season. But Philly's defense hasn't been good either, and they didn't score a touchdown against Philly. So I can't take it over. I I just can't do it. I want to, but I really can't. You? I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with the awful defenses trump the awful offenses. I flip-flopped. I originally liked the over midweek, and I decided to change my mind. Right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll stay with it. I'll just, we're just I'll completely fade you in this one, all right? Cool. All right, very good. And, man, if you didn't like that one, if that one wasn't enough uh, excitement for you, Scott, can I interest you in the Lions? And the Bears. Depends who's quarterback. Because we got we got three choices, apparently. Do you think think Foles is annoyed? Foles is annoyed? Just because Nagy's going, you know, we got three options and Foles is just sitting there. There's no chance in hell you're letting me start. He's the horse shack of quarterbacks. Do you know who horse shack is, Scott? Is that a shack full of horses? He was the guy in, in Welcome Back, Cotter, that always uh, – Ron Palillo always had his hand in the air. Ooh, 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 Mr. Cotter! Ooh, ooh. That was Horshack, and he would never get noticed. That's, that's who Foles is right now. They're not, they're not even looking at Foles. And, you know, they've got two quarterbacks that are banged up, and Foles is like, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I could, uh, I could do that. And uh, I, I don't know, Scott. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, you think Foles gives them the best chance to win right now? I actually think it's Dalton because I don't think Dalton played that badly when he did play to start the season. He wasn't good, don't get me wrong, but he looked okay against Cincinnati. I didn't think he was awful in that game. So, yeah, I'd probably go with Dalton, but realistically, I think if Dalton's even remotely healthy, he'll get the nod, then Fields, then maybe the punter, and then maybe Foles because I don't think Foles is going to start anytime soon. They run the, they run the, they run the single wing. Uh, I've got to go Lions here, buddy. I'm going Lions money line. I mean, you know I made a couple of money line predictions for underdogs last week, and I'm pretty sure they fared relatively well. Uh, But, yeah, my underdog, uh, I'd say radar is tingling here. If we think Nagy's getting fired, and according to some offshore markets, it's about minus 200 for him to be the first coach fired, you might be at DEFCON 1. And losing to the Lions is a pretty good start. So I'll go with the Lions money line. Yep, I agree. I think that's I, – you, you've got – anytime, anytime that spread is three or less, you don't take the points. And you can make that's an argument good. if the Lions had beaten the Ravens, would this be like minus one? Pick them? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It could, it, could be, it could be good for three or four points right there. I, I don't disagree with that premise. Total up and way over, Scott? In yeah. the, this game in the 50s? Yeah, I love the over with Chicago and Matt Nagy's offense. Fantastic. What, they have one passing yard last week? I'll, yes. take, the un- I'll take the under. I'm with you. It's, I, don't know how you, I don't know how you look at one passing yard. And go, well, you know, there's, they're due for uh, regression to the mean. Well, or in this case, it would be progression to the mean. But, yeah, they're probably going to have more than one yard. I would agree. But I don't think they're going to have enough to take that over. Titans at Jets, Scott. It's it's your Jets home game. There, are you you're going out to see the Jets play at the Meadowlands? You, no, you tell me what you had to do. It's 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 what like a three day hike to get to the Meadowlands from from Long Island. A little bit, something like that, with all the traffic and the bridges, and it's it's really annoying because it's a New York team alleg- right. It's a New York team allegedly, but it's in Jersey, so it's kind of a schlep. It's a it's a NYTino. It's a New York team in the name only. 
Yeah, the only New York team is actually Buffalo, and nobody in my area like recognizes them as being actual New York, and they're the yeah, only actual so. New York team. It's really it, in New York. It's it's really there's really like two separate states. There's the whole the whole city, quote unquote, and then there's pretty much everything else, right? Uh yeah, that's one way to put it. Okay, Scott, are we just are we just blindly fading the Jets here? I think you have to, but I do think it'll be a little bit of a sweat for a little while because Tennessee Titans has are missing. Yeah, they got no wide receivers. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, you got no Brown, you got no Julio. I know Ferkster, their tight end, or Ferkster, uh, ended up getting injured last week. He's supposed to play, but I am curious if he's limited. Having said that, if you just give Derrick Henry the ball 40 times, you'll probably win the game anyway. I think that Tennessee is going to win. I think it'll be a hideous game of football. I like the under. You know, if ever there was a game, because you've got, you've got a lot of guys out. You, I don't want to compare got... it to the Jets game last year against Cleveland, where Cleveland had the entire wide receiver room with COVID, and, and Cleveland couldn't do anything, and the Jets ended yeah. up winning the game. Similar vibes. I think Tennessee will win the game, though, but I do think it'll be closer than people think. Is Crowder going to play, bud? He might. He might not. He came back from COVID, and he came back just to still be injured. So I don't really know what his story is. But they activated Denzel Mims, which means, I guess, nothing because he was a healthy scratch. He wasn't even injured for the first couple of weeks. But, yeah, this offense is terrible for the Jets. Tennessee's defense isn't good by any means. But it was okay against the Colts. Ben, but don't break philosophy. I think that Tennessee has enough to win the game. I don't feel great about the spread, but I do feel pretty good about the under. Okay. I, you, I, don't, I don't know. I could possibly play an over with the Jets. Um, I, I can't do it. I, I, I just – I know Tennessee has – you know what? You can take a spin on the Jets plus the points. I don't I'm, hate it. I'm going to make a bold call there. It's, it's, it's one of those situations where – the Titans probably show up and win by 30, and you're like, I thought they had a bunch of guys hurt, and it doesn't matter. But you know what? The Jets are – I don't I don't want to use the gambler's fallacy and say they're due to win, but they're they're due to play a little better football, Scott. I thought I you were going to say they were due to score a touchdown. Well, there is, there is that as well. So you've got the Titans and the under. I've got the under as well, and I'll take a uh, – I'm, I'm actually going to flip-flop. Give me the Jets plus the points. What? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Give me the Jets plus the points. All right. I have Tennessee and Survivor, so I'm expecting a sweat for no apparent reason. Uh, you ever notice that? The Survivor games that you pick are always the ones that are the never easy. They're always the tough ones. No question. Yeah. No question about it. Uh, I'll tell you what. I know you'd be tempted to tease that Titans game. I don't know that I would. Well, you're telling me this after I already teased them on Thursday with the Bengals, so I'll enjoy that Titans minus one and a half. All right. Enjoy, buddy. Thanks. Browns – Browns and Vikings. Browns, the road favorite here, minus a point, 51 and a half is the numero. Vikings, Scott, play a little better football than I thought they would play, after, especially after that week one loss to Cincinnati. How you, are how you feeling about the uh, Skull Nation up there? A little bit of a hot take here. I'm taking Vikings money line. I think they're live in this game. I, I think Minnesota's not that bad. Now, I know that Cleveland has been a team that – looked dominant last week. They were against Justin Fields, and they had one passing yard. Like, I'm not going to overreact to that one great defensive performance by Miles Garrett against that awful Chicago team. Minnesota, offensively, has been really good, and this team should probably be 2-1 and if they had a kicker who didn't shank the kick against Arizona. I think Minnesota at home is good. Cook's supposed to be back, which should help. I think Cleveland's a good team, obviously. But I do think the spread looks surprisingly low. Like, they're kind of daring you to take Cleveland. I think Minnesota's going to hang in there. Now, if it comes down to a field goal at the end, I should, might as well just pack up and go home because there's no way in chance Minnesota's making a clutch field goal. But I'll go with the Vikings. I'll take a little bit of a spin here. Scott says it's a banana in the tailpipe potential. So You don't think this like looks it? a little bit low? I do. I absolutely do. And I'm, I'm – I'm, I'm swimming along, Scott. I see that plastic worm. I'm not sure there's a hook sticking out of it, but I'm probably going to swallow it anyway. That's what I'm saying to you. You know, I will say this. Kirk Cousins 
It looks good. Has been outstanding this year. He's had a very good season. Uh, maybe he doesn't need to be around it, maybe as close to his teammates as in years past. Because uh, doesn't he? Is the plexiglass he like helps doing meetings on his own and, and things like that? I thought he has the plexiglass around him like half the time. I thought that was a joke. I thought it was too, but I just enjoy running with it. He's like in the Pope mobile. It's like the cousins mobile. I just think it's funny. I'm trying to imagine I a guy walking you. around with like a fish tank on his head. You know, I just, I wouldn't respect myself in the morning, Scott, if I didn't play the better team here. And it's despite the fact that cousins has certainly had a better season than years past. I just don't know who Cleveland's played up to this point. Well, they played Kansas City and then nobody. That's what I'm saying. Minnesota has played arguably uh, three better teams uh, than the, certainly two of the teams at Cleveland played, Cincinnati, Arizona, and Seattle. Uh, like you said, they've acquitted themselves pretty well. They've covered the number twice. The Browns have covered the number twice. I just I, I got to go Brownies here. Uh, you're going to take you're going to take the Vikes on the money line, of course. I'm going to play the over here. I'm playing the over as well. 51 and a half. Mm -hmm. Colts at Dolphins. Man, there's some good games this week. And then there's some other games. Colts, another uh, team with a terrific quarterback situation against the Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins, two and a half point home favorites. 42 and a half is the number there. Scott, the Dolphins suffered a uh, heartbreaking defeat in Las Vegas last week, the game that they trailed the whole way, mounted a late comeback only to lose it in overtime. Do they get to redemption here against a, to some, surprisingly bad Colts team, but not to us? Can we, well, can we Nelson, Patterson back was, on a little bit there? I was going to say, I'm assuming that the line movements come because of Nelson's on the IR now, so he's not going yes. to play. You ever see a guard make a, make a difference like that before? No. And I'm not sure if it even matters because Jonathan Taylor has been a non-factor even when Nelson has played. So I don't know right. if that even matters. But do you find it a little bit weird that money's coming in on a Jacoby Brissett team? I find that fascinating to me. Revenge spot, buddy. I kind of like the Colts here. And I know that the Colts are a terrible team. I'm not pretending that they are not an awful team. Mm -hmm. Is Miami that good? I don't think Miami's that good. Well, they've played surprisingly good defense. I don't know if it's surprising. Think, Their defense has two really good corners. Well, I think it's I think it's I think they played better run defense than some people thought they would. Okay. Now they're still they're still not elite, but and I would say they are elite at pass defense. Yeah. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the home team here. I, I don't first of all, with the line movement and all, I don't blame anybody for taking the Dolphins. I'm just taking a spin on something. Okay. I'm just not sure if Brissett's actually better than Carson Wentz. I think it's close. I think both of them are not very good. But right. maybe Frank Reich has a trick up his sleeve. Can you try to run Taylor more than let's just say fifteen times in a game? Maybe just let him run twenty something times. See what happens. Yeah, neither one of these teams run the football very well at all. No, not at all. They, they just don't. They, uh, Indianapolis average is 4.2. Miami even worse than that. So The way I'm looking at it, I'm expecting as, – as I'm assuming you'll agree, which is why we're both going to like the under. It's going to be a hideous game of football. So I'll take right. the points. Yeah, I think, I think you're going to have two teams trying to establish a running attack that don't really have running attacks. The Colts so. should. I, just, I don't know why they're so bad at it. Well, I don't know if I don't know if it's schematic or if they're not as good at run blocking as they are at pass blocking with that awesome Colts line that we hear so much about. Yeah, true. So, all right, so we're both on the under, and we've split. I've got the Dolphins, and you've got the Colts basically fading Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, he likes to yeah. fade Jacoby Brissett for the first time. You don't have to do it with, when he's playing with the Colts. So. I just think that it's going to be a very low-scoring game in <laughs> which it's going to be one possession throughout. I'll take the dog as a result. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, anytime it's a coin flip, it can definitely come up head instead of tails. So yeah. Now, we're getting into a, a little better football here, Scott, as the Panthers travel to Jerry World to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Scott, is, is Dallas play every game at home? It's either a home game or a primetime game, sometimes both. <laughs> 
I swear to God, it seems like they play 12 home games a year. Cowboys, by the way, four-point favorites, 51 and a half. Is the number, Scott, it really comes down to whether or not the Cowboys can stop the Panthers' pass rush. Because if they can't, it's going to be a long day for the DAC and DAC attack. Has anybody done DAC attack? Is that, is that just me? I'm Surely assuming that's a thing, but I like it. It has to have been done before. So I like it, though. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, what do you got there? I'm going with the Cowboys. As much as I wanted okay. to take the dog here with Carolina, they're missing too many pieces. I know that they looked good in the second half against the Texans. Calm down. It's the Texans. They couldn't score for a half. Like, the Cowboys' defense against Philly actually looked pretty good. Philly's offense might be bad, so keep that in mind. But Carolina missing McCaffrey, and you're also missing Horn, who's one of your best corners on the other end, that's pretty brutal. Dallas, even if they cannot fully stop the pass rush, they have enough good receivers to maybe find some quick passes like they did against Tampa Bay. I think they'll move the ball. I think they'll win this game. I'm not sure if Darnold's going to score enough points to keep this close because without Horn, he's a big piece of that defense. I think he's a very good rookie. I'll go with Dallas. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. I, I just I If Carolina think... was healthy, I would take Carolina, but they're not healthy. Yeah, I mean, McCaffrey is such a huge piece, man. He is. And I, I like – I think Chuba Hubbard is going to be – a contributor in the NFL. I, I don't, I, I really like what he did at Oklahoma state. I think, I think he certainly has uh, some promise, but I'm not sure. I mean, that's just such a huge drop off from uh, McCaffrey to Chuba Hubbard at this point. I agree. So. So, sorry. I'm looking at the old miss game. Somebody just made an absolutely insane one handed catch down the sideline. Oh my for who? God. For who? Uh, for old miss. What a catch by Sanders. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, yeah, right. the thing is, people are going to overreact and say, you know, Darnold, he's looked pretty good. And it's like, yeah, he played against the Jets. He played against the uh, Texans. And he looked good against the Saints. Don't get me wrong. Saints were missing about nine coaches in their best corner and whatever. But I do think Dallas's defense is sturdy enough to prevent Darnold from going nuts. So if that happens, I think Dak will get his. I think if Dallas gets to 27, do we think Carolina gets to 23? I'm not sure. I think I think Dallas I think Dallas gets to 31, by the way. But I'm saying 27 maybe tentatively. Do you think Carolina yeah. gets to 23? I'm not really sure on that. So I'm gonna take Dallas. Yeah, I th- I think their ceiling, their absolute ceiling is 24, and I think Dallas covers regardless. So okay. I've got the Cowboys there. Uh I will. I will play the over. I just don't think Dallas is going to be – I think Dallas is going to have to throw. I'm not sure they're going to be able to run the ball. I think they're going to be okay with throwing. What do you, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Dallas. And what's the total again? 51 and a half. Oh, it's tough because I just say Carolina's offense, I think, is going to struggle more than people think. I'm going to take the under. I think okay. Carolina's defense is still going to bend but don't break. Maybe a couple of long field goal drives, and that kind of kills her over. All right, uh, Giants at Saints. Uh, I don't even know where they're playing that game, Scott. Uh, definitely not in uh, MetLife. I'll tell you that much for free. They still in Jacksonville? <laughs> I, I don't know if they moved them around or not. I'm, I was, I was going to look it up here. While I do that, give me your thoughts. Yeah, for this one, I'm taking the Saints, and I'm also taking the under. The Giants, they're 0-3. Yes, they've been competitive the last two games. Am I supposed to be impressed that you only scored 14 points at home against Atlanta? New Orleans is 2-1. and one. They got embarrassed by Carolina with all of the COVID stuff, but they beat Green Bay handily, and they also killed New England last week. And I know New England isn't a great offensive team. Neither is the Giants. And the Saints' defense, really, really good. Plus, the Giants are going to be missing a couple of weapons. No Sterling Shepard, for example. I think that's a big deal. I'm going to go with the Saints because I think Jones, who has thrown no interceptions this season, is really going to have a hard time. So I'm going to go with the Saints. Hideous game, 23-7. to seven. By the way, I feel like I might have been living in a cave this week. New Orleans is back home for the first home game since, for their first true home game of the season. So. Really? I actually wasn't even aware of that. I wasn't either. Between, between you and I, 
Hard to believe we let that slip by that they were going to have it. It was by, um, by force of habit, but I just assumed like it would all work itself out, and I just completely forgot to follow up on it. You know, at this point, after, after the second game, you look at the Saints, you go, well, one of those games is an outlier. Either them beating the hell out of the Packers, either that's the outlier, or them getting stomped the next week, that's an outlier. So when they had a good game last week, you tend to start thinking, you know, maybe this Saints team – is better than we think. Maybe they're not quite as good as that team that beat the Packers, but maybe that's more the way they're trending. I say all that to say this. Give me the Saints minus seven. I think this is a very good football team. Giants without Sterling Shepard, that's, a, uh, that's just a, a nightmare waiting to happen. This Giants team is spunky. Uh, uh, defense showed that they can, uh, you know, make some plays, but overall, I just don't think they get it done. And I don't think they score much against what is looking to be a very good Saints uh, defense. I'll take the Saints and the under Fred, Fred and the needle a little bit. There is no chance in the world that I'm taking it over with the Giants offense without Sterling Shepard and the Saints in general. Because Winston, at this stage, they're trying to turn the most interception-prone quarterback of all time into a game manager, which is mind-boggling to me. But he's right. only having like 140 passing yards per game. They don't throw the ball. They just milk all the clock in the world. Like, I don't like the under. Jameis checks. Jameis checked down. They, they've turned him into Taysom Hill. Basically. They're trying the to, but, yeah. you know. Chiefs and Eagles, Scott. A uh, Chiefs minus seven. 54 and a half is the total there. I'm taking the Chiefs. Thoughts? Taking the Chiefs? I kind of have to. It's not because I think the Chiefs are going to bounce back because they're due. I'm not buying any of that. I just think Philly stinks. There's really not much else to read into it. You looked at the offense. They ran the ball two times against the Cowboys. They're going to run the ball a lot more uh, with Miles Sanders this week because the Chiefs against the run, no bueno. But in general, I have serious questions about basically every phase of this Eagles team. Is the defense good? It's okay. Not really. They lost Graham. That hurts the offensive. That hurts the defensive line. Is the secondary good? It's okay. Not great. Is the offense good? Eh. Is the quarterback good? Not really. So I don't really know what I'm supposed to like about this team. If you think that the Chiefs, even with all the issues they have, are going to still manage to score 30 plus points, which they're easily capable of doing, do I think Philly is going to score mid 20s? And I have no idea. Give me the Chiefs. Okay, you know, it's so it's so tempting. It, sh- it should be an auto play here with the Chiefs. The uh, Philly, the Eagles are missing three starters off the offensive line. That's a whole separate point. I forgot to mention that the offensive line is was completely banged up, and every single pass against the Cowboys, which is why I had the completions over, was basically a glorified checkdown. Well, you know who else was missing key key, key pieces off the offensive line when they faced the Chiefs, Scott. Uh, it's Baltimore. either Baltimore or the Chargers. The Baltimore Ravens, and it didn't matter one bit against that horrific defense. But they at least have a system in place. I don't know what Philly has. I know. I know. But they – the Chiefs have a habit of playing down to the level of competition. They, uh, they well, isn't that everybody? Do. Well, I mean, they do – and they do it a lot on the road. I'm being facetious and- because every team is technically beneath them besides, like, one other team. Oh, all right. Well, the other thing that sticks out, and this just keeps hammering over and over, Scott, Kansas City, 1-12 and against the number, last 13. I can't, get, I can't get in front of that. Give me the Eagles plus the 7. You also mentioned the Baltimore game. They were leading by double digits through about two and a half quarters of that game. So, And, and, but the, and, and what happened? The defense couldn't hold. But you're comparing Baltimore with an actual full-on running game system, everything like that, to Philly. And – Philly's offensive line's a mess. You can acknowledge that their defense isn't very good. I just don't know where Philly has any edge in this game. Um, I would say on the – I still think on the offensive side of the ball, if they decide to run, if they decide to run the ball with Sanders. It's a bunch I of backup can... offensive linemen. I don't know how yeah. I feel about yeah. that. I think it matters. I think they can still have success. Okay. I think the Phillies are just – I think – sorry, not the Phillies. Phillies are also bad, but I think I the did, Eagles I did are – the same thing. I think that the Eagles are just not a very good football team. I'll take one of the best teams in the league. Okay. 
54 and a half. Where are you at on that? I'll take the over. I, my, uh, I don't want to say it's a hot take because it involves the Chiefs scoring a bunch of points. I think the Chiefs might score 40 here. All right. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to play, I'm going to play the under. Well, they're correlated, in my opinion. Yes, I totally agree. I think, they, I think, they, I think the Chiefs play with their food. Texans at Bills. Bills minus 17 is the number 47. You want to thread the needle there with Bills in the uh, under? I'm blindly taking 17 points. I'll just, I'll just say it right now. I know historically speaking, if the spread is this large, you take the points. Especially with the team coming off a Thursday night game. So they had extra preparation for Buffalo. Having said all that, I'm taking Buffalo. I think Buffalo losing to Pittsburgh was one of the worst things to happen to the rest of the league because Buffalo now is just trying to kill everybody. No mercy. This team is actually trying to run it in, just run it, run up the score, just shove points down your throat. They don't give a damn. I was talking to you before. I know that offshore there's a prop on which team's going to score the most points this week. Buffalo's about plus 450. They scored 43 last week against Washington. <laughs> I think they're scoring 40-plus again. I'm not sure if Houston's going to even reach 17. So, in principle, I know where you're coming from. I can't do it. I got to take Buffalo. All right. And the over? What's the, what's the number again? 47. I got to go with the over. I got the Bills scoring 41 if not more. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with the over. It's another it's another correlated situation. It really is. Because if you think the Texans are going to get into a track meet with the Bills, I don't think gambling's for you because that's just not going to happen. I'll take the – I've got the under 47. That way I don't, I don't have to travel. Well, it's correlated. We disagree on the side, so that makes all you know, the I say, sense. But I don't have to play the Bills. I don't have to play the Bills at the end. That's, that's when it gets interesting when you've got to cover 17 and still hit the under. Uh, my, my hot take, which isn't even that hot because I said that I think the Bills score 40-something points, I think yeah. Allen has five touchdowns. Look at that prop. See, I'm, I'm, see if you can find that prop somewhere. I'm curious. Hey, well. Cardinals at Rams, Scott. Rams minus four and a half, 54 and a half is the number. Uh, I've got a hot take for you. I think the Rams may be the best team in football. What do you think of that? I don't know if that's a hot take. I think they're very, very good. Now, Arizona is a very good team as well. However, they should have lost the game to Minnesota. This defense I still have question marks with. They haven't played anybody. Minnesota, I think, is a decent team. So let's get that out of the way. I think they're decent. But they beat Jacksonville, and they beat Tennessee. You know what all three of those teams have in common? Uh, they haven't won a game. No, abysmal, def- ab- abysmal defenses. That's true. They go that from is. awful defenses to arguably a top two defense in the league. I think you got some problems. Plus, if you want to just go through the actual record books here, McVay owns Kingsbury. It's not even a discussion when it comes no. to these matchups. They win by seven plus points every time. I'm going with the Rams. Yeah, it's 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 your gift of the week. There you go. That's Rams less than six. Yeah, that's. I, I just don't see. It. I, and I like this Arizona team. I, I liked them more than you did in the off season. I thought they had a shot to make the playoffs. I still don't think the I, defense is very good, but it's serviceable. The defense is not that bad. It's certainly improved. Yeah, that's true. It's certainly improved. Uh, I think there's going to be a little more defense in this game, especially from the Rams. But I think, I think the Cardinals, Scott, I think they may struggle to, to get to 17. I think they, they may, I think 20, 20 to 21 is their absolute ceiling in this. Okay. I think so that's I a know. little bit harsh, but I yeah. think. That's how much I like the Rams defense. I think the Rams are scoring 30 plus. I think if the Rams score 35, I would not be surprised at all. I'm taking the over. I think the Rams will probably win 35 to 24, 35, 27, something like that. I'll take the over in the Rams. Yeah, yeah no, I think 
I think Brands could get to 35, and I could still catch this ticket on the under. I bet the under 54 and a half. I just, I think that, I think that Rams defense is going to dominate. Okay. Seahawks at 49ers. It's the put up or shut up bowl right here. Um, 49ers, two and a half point home favorites in this one. 52 is the number. What problems in Seattle, Scott? Well, preseason, I said straight up, I don't think this team is very good. And it's because of lack of depth. It's because the Seattle Seahawks have invested half their capital in wide receivers an elite quarterback, and an extremely overpaid safety. Is that a fair way to put it? Well, you had me till the last one. Uh, so far, overpaying for the first two isn't a bad strategy if you want to win a championship. Well, that's what I'm overpaying. saying. The first two aren't bad. It's the third the one. That's not good. It's the third one that's the problem. I didn't say it was a bad thing to pay Wilson what he wants because, duh, he's worth all the money that you can give him. But your team depth is automatically going to suffer when you're paying those guys that much money. Not to mention Bobby Wagner, who's really, really good, but you're also paying him a pretty penny. You have no depth at basically any position. So right. Seattle has relied for the last couple of years on mediocre rosters and Russell Wilson to do some Russell Wilson things in the fourth quarter of games. I don't think the roster is very good. Now the 49ers have injuries to the secondary, so I do think that Seattle is going to move the ball. You can look at pretty much anything you want when it comes to this matchup and – suggests there's going to be points because I think both defenses have issues. I think both offenses are pretty good. I'm taking the over. I'm going to take the Niners as well. I think when push comes to shove, I'll take the better overall team laying about a field goal or even less than a field goal in some spots. You? Yeah. My problem is the Seattle, well, once again, they're, uh, they struggle to run the ball at times. They've tr- they've tried to establish the run, and then they and they kind of seem to get bored with it, Scott. Now sometimes they get a little bit behind, but they really seem to abandon the run quickly. I think that would do a great deal to take a lot of pressure off of Russ and the boys. See, the 49ers course, can't run the ball, but at least they know they can't run the ball. So they've started to try to adjust to it. Right, right, and the, and they are and they're throwing more short. Mm-hmm. possession type passes that kind of take the place of a, of a running game. So yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Oh man. You know, I just can't, I can't get behind the saddle team right now. I think they've got real problems. I've got to play the hometown Niners. You look at the line of two and a half that implies that odds makers have made the Seahawks a, a half point better team overall. I don't agree with that assessment. Yeah, I agree. As far as, as, far as the total goes, over. You gonna you gonna play the over? Seattle's defense is useless. I can't take an under with that team. I can't do it. Yeah, this Seattle defense has uh, really only done a good job against stopping Indianapolis, which I'm not sure there's much of a much of a bonus for that. But uh, and they are the problem is they're susceptible to the run, and I'm not sure how much of that San Francisco is going to be able to do, like we talked about. I'm assuming we would agree, though, Wilson should find some holes in this injured 49er secondary. It should lead to some big points. Yeah, I think, I think you're probably right. I think, and I think it's going to be a situation where the Seahawks are going to have to play from behind and throw the ball. Uh, for that reason, I'll take the over with it. Yep, I agree. Ravens-Broncos pick is the line right now, 44 and a half. Is your total. Scott, this is a uh, – Denver team is 3-0, and but if you look at their schedule, of course, they're playing the last place schedule, so that really helps. But it's almost like they've played two separate preseasons as they've played the Giants, the Jaguars, and the Jets. So How, now, many, how many wins do those teams have combined, by the way? I, do, do, do the Giants have any? No, I'm joking. The answer is zero. They're combined. Okay, I thought, that's what I was going to say. I, couldn't, I, I thought the Giants were 0-3. I knew the other two were off. Well, the Jaguars lost on Thursday, so now the the, the uh, Broncos' combined opponent record is 0-10. 0-10. 0-10. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a step up in weight class for this Broncos team. I think we're going to – I think this is a season where we're going to look back at the Broncos and go, oh, remember when they were 3-0? and You know, not quite – not quite to the extent that they did with Roethlisberger last year when they – you know, when the Steelers were 11-0 and – puked on their shoes coming down the stretch. However, I think that they are a, a team that 
will not continue their winning ways, especially against the Ravens. Ravens got some issues, no question about it, but the Broncos, they haven't seen anything like this Ravens rushing attack and Lamar Jackson. I've, I've got to play the Ravens here. I know before the season we talked about the two coaches that we might want to gamble on for first to be fired. First one, obvious, Matt Nagy. We both right. threw it out there. Now he's the huge favorite. We knew that. Our second choice was Fangio because we right. think Fangio stinks. And we thought that if this team was going to get off to a slow start against some awful competition, they'd fire him instantly. Now right. this team's 3-0. and I didn't forget that Fangio is still a bad coach. <clears throat> Harbaugh is going to coach circles around this man on Sunday. Give me Baltimore. 44 and a half. I think the Broncos struggled to get to 17. I, I, I can't take the over here. It's, it's on the pass. Plenty, plenty of meat on the bone for me. Uh, Plus, even if, even if Denver's offense with Teddy two gloves isn't as good as it's looked so far, I think right. that defense is actually pretty good. Yes, I would agree with that. Although, again, having, having exactly faced an offensive juggernaut in the Jets, Giants, and Jaguars. No, it's but true, but you still got Von Miller in a pass rush. I think Sertan's mm-hmm. a good corner. You have some oh, options I mean, there. He's a, he's a great corner, if you, and if you haven't taken a sniff of Sertan for defensive rookie of the year yet, well, number one, you, a lot of the good numbers are gone. I think it's so, a two-horse um, race between him and Parsons at this point. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, losing Bradley Chubb is a blow. It hurts, no but problem. he's been injured his entire career. I understand. I understand. But I'm just, I'm just saying that would be a even more intimidating unit if Bradley Chubb were healthy. But, yeah, yep. he is a guy that is. You can't make the club in the tub, buddy. That's, mm-hmm. that's what they say. Steelers, Packers, Packers minus six. Uh, I think we're moving on. Buccaneers, Patriots. No, I'm kidding. Scott, you making any kind of case for the Steelers here? You, Hell you no. Can't. We've already we've already pissed off Yinzer Nation. So can Haskins play quarterback? We can't go back now. That's until they until they make the move to Mason Rudolph. And I don't know. Did they get did they get healthier on the defensive side of the ball this week? Well, Watt's the huge question mark because, of course, he's the main cog of that unit. But truth is, I don't even know if it matters. I mean, you can just talk about the fact that even with a pass rush, Rodgers still is very creative at buying time. We know that Adams is basically uncoverable. And the defense wasn't good against San Francisco. You had a lot of BS penalties in the entire second half. I thought Green Bay's defense actually played pretty well, all things considered. So, no, I – think that the Steelers are going to go in, look awful again offensively. I think Green Bay will probably score 28 points. And do I think that Pittsburgh's going to score more than 20? The answer is no, because I think this offense stinks. So I'll take Green Bay. All right, so here's the update. And this is the injury that I forgot to mention. Chase Claypool is out for this one, Scott. Joe well, they got Juju. Deontay Johnson back, so they basically just traded wide receivers. Yeah, well, and, J- and Juju Smith-Schuster is, is, is going to go. It looks like T.J. Watt is going to go as well. Like you said, Deontay Johnson's back. Uh, Highsmith is going to go. So they do get a little healthier there um, on both sides of the ball. Other Can than they losing, throw but- the ball more than 10 yards in the air on, on, like, more than one play in a game? That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure losing wide receivers really matters at this point. If if you like the Steelers, take the over in uh, Najee Harris receptions. He had 14 yeah. last week. Just take the over. Yep. Check down, Charlie. Um. Well, obviously we're going to play the Packers minus the six here. Yeah. As far as the total goes, no um, offense out of that Steelers. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got to play the under you. Well, because you got Watt back, so I think the defense will look better than it did against Cincinnati. I'll, right. I, I got to take the under. Even if Pittsburgh does score some points, it's going to be a couple of really long, painful drives. You agree with that? Yes, I do. I'm uh, sorry, Boston, yeah. All good. Um, yeah, I think, I think there's going to be – I don't see the Steelers having the ability to sustain long drives. I was, I was impressed with that Packers pass rush last week. I got to be honest with you. Well, I don't either, uh, but I'm saying even if Pittsburgh is able to sustain long drives, if they end up scoring a touchdown, but it's 14 plays, 80 yards, seven and a half minutes, that's yeah. still brutal for an over. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. That's an over killer for sure. That, so, yeah, I'm going I'm to go with the under. 
Okay, very good. Um, all right, I guess that's going to be it for uh, this week, Scott. Any other games on there that you can think of? Well, we got the Sunday night game involved. Oh, that's right. The... There is one more game. It's the return of Tom Terrific. You know, I haven't heard anybody talking about this in the media, Scott. I forgot it was this weekend. Uh, yeah, I really didn't notice. Unfortunately, it's only the return for one guy because Gronk is not going to be available. We're going to be Gronkless, baby. He's going to he's going to spend some time watching film. It's OJ yeah. Howard season. Take those OJ Howard over props. Bucks minus seven. Scott, last I heard, the books were reporting that they've never seen anything like the money coming in on the Buccaneers, like in excess of 90% of the bets and money landing Tampa Bay side. Now, that was yesterday. I haven't heard numbers as of today yet. Is America right, Scott? Is America ever right? Is, are mass quantities of people doing things ever a good idea to join in with the group? The last thing I remember was the whole entire universe betting Kansas City minus three and a half against Baltimore. Right, right. That didn't work yeah. out. But the thing is, if you want to be contrarian, this is the ultimate contrarian spot, arguably, of the season. Because you know that everyone's going to be on Brady. Brady won the Super Bowl. People think Belichick. I don't want to say that they think that he's overrated as a coach. But people have made the argument because of Brady winning a championship that Brady is the secret sauce behind Belichick's success, which I don't agree with. I think it's a symbiotic relationship where both of them are just really, really good at their job. But the point that I'm trying to say is everybody is going to take Tampa. If you want to be different, take New England. I'm not different. I'm going to take Tampa. Mac Jones struggled against New Orleans. I know that Tampa's defense isn't very good. New England's offense isn't very good, just to be completely honest. If Gilmore was fully healthy, then maybe this defense could hold up. I don't think it can. Give me Tampa. I know Brady's going to want to get some passing yards, but he should pass the passing yard record in about the first quarter. So that's not going to play much of a factor. But I'm going Tampa. New England is a team that I love taking unders with. But, damn, I don't think that offense is any good. You? Well, you kind of glossed over something, and, and we did this. You did this on the show Friday, and I and we need to talk about it. Where you you just automatically come out and say the Buccaneer defense isn't very good. Have in three games have we gone from this is the best unit in the NFL to the Buccaneers defense isn't very good? Make your case, sir. Just saying. So far, from what I've seen, not very good. But you also want to look at who they faced off against. Faced off against the Rams, top five offense in the league. Faced off against Dallas, top five offense in the league. Faced off against Atlanta. He gave up 20-something points. You also had two pick sixes. So I do think you're going to see some um, some growth, not some regression, what, what's the – some progression from this defense right. because they've gone up against two elite offenses already, and New England is anything but an elite offense. Is that a fair statement? Uh, I, I think I think on that we are we are definitely in agreement that you it would be hard pressed to make the case that New England is even a upper half offense. It's definitely twenty and beyond, and when I say beyond, it's probably close to mid twenties. You know, this is a still this Tampa Bay team for all their flaws. They are still a team that is impossible to run on. They're, yep. still, they're still giving up just three and a half yards a carry, 56 yards per game. Good news is for other teams, they're really easy to pass on. They're giving up three and a half, 350 a game as far as passing yardage goes. That does not fit the New England scale set very well, my friend. Um, you know, the other problem for New England, uh, James White's done. And that is a huge piece of that offense that has to be uh, a kind of a security blanket for young quarterback like that, I would think. <sighs> Scott. There's nothing to like about New England except for being contrarian. That's really the only yes. angle you have. You're absolutely right. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's old school versus new school. So if you're making this pick in a bubble, you're, you're an old school guy. You don't have – there's, you know, there's not the internet. There's nothing like that. You're sitting down with a newspaper and you're saying – you're comparing offenses and defense. You say there's nothing that this Patriots do 
better than the Buccaneers, with the possible exception of defense a little bit. But in this day and age, where we're hyper aware of all the information, how the bets are going, what's, what's, what's happening with the amount of money coming in on each side, and you say, well, now I have another factor that's going to come into play when I make my decision. And it has to, it's with me, it's the two sides fighting. What, my, what do my eyes believe? What do the numbers tell me? So this is kind of a thing where I kind of trend a little bit more towards the old school. Sorry to interrupt your point, but kind of just to build on that. A lot of people try to look at the bet counts and say, well, if 90% of the public is on it, I have to like the other side. Right. Maybe it's just me. I just like the information. It does not factor into any of my decisions ever. The way I look at it is as a handicapper, I trust myself and my research process where if I like a team, I don't care if other people see it the same way. If I like it, I'm sticking to my guns. So I'm taking Tampa. Are you the same way or do you factor in contrarian plays a little bit more? Because I think it's a good idea in hindsight. But then again, because it's the same thing where if you lose as a contrarian, then you're going to say, oh, it was obvious. Why wouldn't I take Tampa? But if you win, then you'll say you're a genius until the next time you lose. Right. It's all selective recall. But I think that some people try to be contrarian, which is fine if you're contrarian better because people can do well if you pick your spots well. I'm not sure this is a good spot because I don't think New England's very good. I also think you can go too far with it where if you just automatically fade the public every time, you know, you, you think that's a good strategy because the public overall loses money on bets. You can get yourself into doing into trouble doing that as well because sometimes the public is right, Scott. Sometimes the guy that's trying to hit his flush draw on the river against you, your set will get home. That's the way it works, you know. Sometimes, sometimes the fish win, and they keep, that's why they keep coming back. So sometimes those big public plays, if you're taking, you know, the favorites on Monday night, the overs and whatnot, sometimes they cash. Also, to go to that point, just quickly, because I don't want to take too long on this. When it comes to being contrarian, that's over a tremendously large sample size. You can't take the whole sample size and form a microcosm into one game and just say, because the public is all over this game, I have to take New England. There's also, there's, and there's also an outside of football angle on this with the Brady mystique and the New England. There's also a whole universe that influences those bets. Do you think Brady tries to run it up a little bit? No. No, you don't no, think so? I, I would think the opposite. I would think the opposite. I think, would, I think Brady would be against that if they get a two touchdown lead or something and have an opportunity to pile on. I don't think they do. You, okay. You that? Well, if that's the case, then, then you're making an argument for New England through the back door. <clears throat> I think it's certainly, I think it's certainly possible. And I, I'm not, like I said, this Buccaneers defense, they could still be really good, but they haven't gotten home in the pass rushes. And that's everything on their defense pretty much flows downhill from them. A being able to stop the run and B getting home on the pass rush. If they can't get pressure on the quarterback, it's, it could be a long day. However, the good news is for them, quarterbacks Matt Jones or yeah. Mac Jones rather. So, I just, I just, I, I see more than I see more than seven points of disparity here. I do. I think if you're looking at a garbage time, then maybe. But if you need to rely on garbage time, I'll take the team that's up ten with two minutes to go. It's really you. You cannot, as a successful handicapper, really handicap for backdoor covers or garbage time. You can can, for overs, for totals maybe. You can be aware of the possibility, yes, for and it makes a lot more sense for totals, I agree, that you could have some late garbage time uh, touchdowns, whatever. But in this case, you know what, we spent spent a long time on this game, and it's basically, we spent most most of our time with me hemming and hawing, explaining all the different reasons why I'm on the fence here. I'm going to take the Buccaneers uh, after after all that I am going to take the favorite and it was it was really close because I like I like Belichick at home I like that crowd this is a huge game for New England so I don't think it's that big of a game for the Bucs well when you say you like Belichick at home a lot of those stats are with Brady because with Cam Newton I don't think they were great at home last year no no they weren't but I, I you know I'm just saying in general I I like Belichick at home, but you, you brought up a great point. 
because you see all the Belichick stats, you see all the Patriots stats, and you really have to disregard all of them for the last 20 years, right? Yeah, I, I don't say throw it out, but he proved last <laughs> year that even if you're a great coach, you needed at least a competent quarterback. And Mac Jones could be. We don't know yet. Right. It's, it's, it's early. Total? I'm going with the under. I think that even if Tampa Bay does end up scoring a decent amount of points, I think New England's goal is going to be force them to slowly and methodically move the ball downfield. I think Belichick's going to try to keep everybody in front of them, force them to go on long drives, and hope there's some penalties, hope some stuff goes awry, and New England can't really move the ball. I'll go with the under. You? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, just, don't, I just don't see the Patriots off that much in this situation with, with that total. Scott, let me ask you, have you made any adjustments in your totals yet due to the fact that 70% of the early games have gone under and about 60% of the late games have gone over? Has that factored in yet after three weeks? See, not really, because I feel like it's a good trend to have just if you would have known it back to the future style. But the problem is, is that you never know when you miss the boat on something or not. Because we talked about it for preseason, and you had the favorites – uh, who did really well the final week. You had the unders, which were crushing in about the first week or so of preseason. Right. And then people started slamming the unders, and guess what happened? Yeah. You adjusted, and it went over. So I think that it's important to keep that in mind. However, I think that if we know it, the odds makers probably know it too. You don't think they're drunk? Uh, they could be in some select spots, but that's a lot of alcohol if you're drunk on the entire card. Absolutely right. All right, Scott. Well, we've reached that point in the show. On our college show, we give our best three plays because there's much, many fewer games on the pro side. We limit it to one, and uh, it's time for our favorite segment, Scott. Here we go. Do you have it? Oh, uh, it, it didn't play? No, I didn't hear anything. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's that's my bad. I've got to, I've got to adjust. It's it. fine. I'm don't sorry. worry about it. Whatever. Out on the wrong channel. All right. All so it's our it's our lock of the century. We'll have the actual sound effects in place next week. You know, it's high quality production right here, Scott. Yep. And, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll let right. you go. I'll let you go first this week. That's right. Losers walk, buddy. So last week you went one and zero to run your or not last week. Two weeks ago we didn't do a show last week. We had some technical difficulties. We had uh, – you were out there at Circa, and I just basically didn't get it rocking with anybody else. So apologies there. Uh, but you went – two weeks ago, you went 1-0 and to run your season record to 2-0. and I went 1-1 one and one as I had the Rams to cover 3.5. They did not do that. By the way, it Jets team total under. That's been a solid play. Uh, so I'm 1-1. One and one, You're 2-0. and oh. Anyway, losers walk. That's me. I'm going to go back to a game that we talked about. Oh, no shocker there, huh? I'm going to play the Cowboys minus the four, Scott. I just think this is a Panthers team. We talked about it a couple with a couple different teams today with Denver and uh, with, the, with the Panthers. Who have they played? Who have they faced? What have they done? Um, we're, going to, we're going to find out because this Dallas offense, it's the real deal. Their defense, it's, uh, it's GED, Scott. Good enough, dude. I like the Cowboys. Dak Prescott, I think he can do a nice job at avoiding the pressure mobile quarterback he can roll away from it they can also move that pocket i like the cowboys to take care of business at home in jerry world minus the four points you and for this one i'm going to go back to a game that we obviously talked about already i'm going to take the rams minus four and a half at home against the cardinals the cardinals good team don't get me wrong however they haven't faced a good defense yet and i know that we're all trying to Talk about how Kyler Murray looks unbelievable and how they're trying to push the fact that he looks like he could be a top three quarterback. That's true, but against the Rams, he has not fared particularly well in his career, and neither has Kingsbury, because when the Rams face off against the Cardinals, it is typically one-way traffic. Now, to go through the actual numbers, uh, do you know the last time the Cardinals actually beat the Rams? Last time the Cardinals beat the Rams, this is 2021, and I'll report Kingsbury. Uh, 2016. No, 2018. So 2016 is technically right. It was 2017, January 1st, 
So uh, it was in the 2016 season, which so means – You're on my first punch. So which means that the Rams have won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight meetings, and all of those meetings have been by, let's just say, a lot of points. They've been by at least seven points. The Cardinals have been getting shelled by this team, and I think that's going to continue because the Rams have proven, especially against Tampa last week, offensively, this team's a juggernaut. Stafford looks great. The offense looks fantastic. And defensively, with Donald up front, with Ramsey in the secondary, this team is just really good from top to bottom. And even though the Cardinals, I do think, are a good team, defensively, I still have some questions. I think the Rams should probably score 30-something. And Kingsbury, until he exercises some demons against this one guy, I can't trust him to keep it within six points. So I'm going to take McVay. These Kingsberries taste like Kingsberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> I have children, as you well know. Sometimes, of course, you love all your children, but sometimes your children are in competition or they're doing something, and, and, and there has to be one child that wins and one child that loses. You have to root for that child. So I kind of feel that way with this. These two teams I like a lot. I liked Arizona in the offseason. I like what they've done so far this year. I think defense has improved. But I like the Rams even more, Scott. This is an offense that's always been – uh, it's good under the influence of McVay, and they finally got the piece they were looking for in Matt Stafford. Now, I will cop to not being as big a Matt Stafford supporter as some people. I was tainted. I was tainted by his horrible years in Detroit. So he has been everything that uh, the, uh, the people that had positive predictions thought he would be. Been very good. The defense, never a question about that defense. So, in this case, two teams I like quite a bit. I'm with you, buddy. I got to go with the Rams, too. I totally agree. I'm assuming Arizona might be a little bit of a popular underdog pick just because they're also undefeated. You're getting points in a division rivalry game. Sure, sure. I, I just ball. can't overlook the fact that McVay out schemes Kingsbury every time they play. Yep, and it isn't even close. That's the thing about it. There, haven't, there hasn't been any games where there's really been a lot of sweat, if I'm remembering that correctly, right? I think last year there might have been a little bit of was sweat. There one, was there one single score game last year? Uh, at the end, no. But there was one game that was very close. Arizona made a run at the end, and then Los Angeles put it away with a touchdown late. Of course, you know, again, you can look at those trends, and I think some of them will be able to hold, like the defense, what they do. But Well, it's a matter of offense. trends, but I'm, I'm also grouping it because I think the trends could also lead into the fact that McVay owning Kingsbury. I don't know if that's a trend or just a fact. I just think he's a much better coach. All right. Good enough. It's, it's, it's hard to make an argument with at this point, although I'm probably higher on Kingsbury than you are, but I still, I, I can't, I can't go. That's a, that's a bridge too far to say. Well, I've, I've, I've always been on the, on the McVay hype train. I think he's a tremendous coach. I know you do. All right. So there you go, guys. Any final thoughts, Scott? Uh, not really hoping for a solid NFL weekend Hopefully we'll make some money. Hopefully I cash some DFS lineups. And other than that, yeah, nothing really, nothing really uh, else to talk about. You? A lot of hopefullys there, buddy. Yeah, Hope, hopefully. But we're talking me, about this in God. advance. I'm not going to – I like to be a little bit humble. So I'm trying to not say straight up, we're going to yeah. run the table. We're winning everything. But I'm hopeful it's all going to work out. It's our five-star lock. You cannot miss. Yeah, I can't far. say that. I can't say that because we didn't have the sound effect. So all the entire I confidence is shot. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I, wear, I wear it on my shoulders, man. Uh, just to recap, of course, Scott uh, takes the Rams minus the four and a half. I've got the Cowboys minus the four. Scott, for my hopefully list, I am going to the Royals game tonight. And not to brag, but I will be sitting in a suite, of which I had absolutely nothing to do with whatsoever. I'm just right place, right time. But anyway... Sal Perez will go for his 49th tonight, which would break the Royals record and strengthen his lead there in the American League. I've got him at plus 250. So give me a give me a salvi bomb. That's my hopefully list for today. And hope, hopefully my, my college football teams will stop collapsing in the fourth quarter. Amen. All right, buddy. So for myself, for Scott Reichel, for the whole gang over here at Winners and Winers Radio, we appreciate you checking us out today. Good luck on all of your plays. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money.
when you head back to the window. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time on Winners and Winners Radio. Take care, everybody.